I was thinking like, oh no, it's starting and I didn't I didn't get a chance to shave today. Well, because you're on vacation and the only reason you're here is because John's like, hey, can you do this thing on Tuesday? <laughs> That's how this happened, yep. That is how it happened. All right, so I'm going to make sure that we're actually streaming on Twitch and we are a fantastic good job. And if you're wondering why my head is so far to the right, it's because I have the world's biggest monitor. Weird flex. Okay. I think Second largest. my, I think, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Do you have a bigger monitor? It's like I don't know how it, to like Yeah. Yeah. The scale of like mine here. is like yeah. yeah. Okay. So do we all have the same monitor then? It's 49 kind of like inch curve? Yes? I don't know. Forty nine and like a quarter inch on this guy. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, Ken this, did flex. <laughs> well, uh so when the monitor showed up, my wife dragged it into my living room like a dead deer. Like it was a six foot long box and she's like, What is yep. this? And I was like, John said I could get it. My youngest fits inside the box closed. Nice. <laughs> All right, everybody. Today we're on the anti-life, anti-siphon live stream. Uh, this is called the address space layout randomization uh, show. And the reason why is because we never know what we're going to talk about before we get here. And today we got Kent and Jordan. Kent and Jordan, what are you going to talk about today? We are going to talk about uh, group managed service accounts or why you should not save passwords for service accounts ever again. Yeah, well, you should uh, solve the Kerber roasting problem. Kerber. If you lost your share, I assume it's because you rebooted or intentionally. No, I I dropped it because I was like, not yet, Jason. Yeah, not no, yet. I don't know. Hide it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not yet. All right, so here's what we're going to do today. Kent and Jordan are going to show something that is interesting, uh, something cybersecurity related. If you're here and you're not into cybersecurity, well, welcome. Hopefully, you'll join us. If you were like at a Minecraft video and all of a sudden you like came over and you're like, what is this? Uh, yeah, it's not Minecraft. And that's fine because we may play Fortnite at some point, uh, but most likely never. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to hit share screen oh, i'm hey. going to go full screen for kent and then you're going to show us how to do group policy, <laughs> group policy? I'm not i have no interest in touching group policy today so, right, I got, so i got an email um a couple days ago about our class that we just did in where are we san diego um and he said the person said essentially like hey that service account stuff can you talk about that again i know we got the recording but can you talk about that again uh, and then John asked me literally within an hour of that saying, hey, uh, can you do a lab? So essentially what we've done is we've taken one of our labs uh, from class and we made it public so that we can kind of demonstrate it and, and give you a little uh, teaser about how the labs work in our environments for our class. And also uh, for the opportunity to talk more about service accounts and group managed, or sorry, group uh, managed service accounts. So that was kind of uh, how that played out. So to get uh, kind of the First things out of the way, uh, this is for, this lab comes from Defending the Enterprise. Um, this is a class that Jordan and I have built um, over the last couple of years and taught a few times. Uh, we got asked, like, when's the next time it's scheduled? And uh, it's not right now. We did do, uh, we did we did capture it for the on-demand, so that's coming up. But uh, yeah, that's coming up. It'd be nice if we had it scheduled. Hmm. All right. So a couple of things about this. Uh, in our class, we talk about a lot of different things, and so a lot of it's Active Directory based because a lot of organizations still use Active Directory. Uh, and some of the things we talk about in terms of better practices or best practices, whatever they're called, uh, come from the things that we've seen before. So Jordan and I have, have experience uh, in the past um, working for a lot of different organizations, working in a lot of different Active Directory environments. And then also as a um, security consultants, we see... Um, the chaos that happens in legacy Active Directory environments. Uh, one of the stories I can say about that is we one time were just had access to Active Directory. We were looking at information about accounts um, in Active Directory using AD Explorer. Uh, and that's something we cover in class too. But one of the things we found was a comment uh, on one of the accounts that we'd found. The account was like SA underscore printer or something like that. So we can kind of guess that the account was, was a service account for printers. Uh, and what we found amusing about it is there's a comment field in, in Active Directory and attributes. Uh, and the attribute was uh, just, it was just like random characters. It turned out to be the password for the account. Well, the, con the comment fields on those types of things, everybody can see them. So we had the password for a service account. Uh, what makes things really bad in that case, though, is the fact that that service account was actually domain admin. So that, that particular customer had a lot of things to, to clean up and, and get working better. But it, it brought forward the question, uh, how do you 
handle service accounts? Are you supposed to put the passwords in a, a password manager um, or are you supposed to like put them in the comment field and then attributes? And um, obviously you don't want to do that. And in class, we talk about different ways to kind of clean up Active Directory in a legacy environment. Uh, and when we did that, we, we found there's lots of options. And, and what you really want to get to at some point is the reduction of the number of service accounts that you actively have to manage. So Active Directory uh, made a feature called Group Managed Service Accounts. And essentially, it's, it's leveraging um, SPNs, right, service principal names, uh, for services in such a way that you can provide access to a password um, to specific devices, like computer accounts. Uh, and in that process, you can create service accounts without ever having to have a password. You no longer have to manage it. You don't have to store it anywhere. Active Directory does it all. So we've gone through and we've created a lab that demonstrates this. And it kind of goes to the point of, Ideally, you want to get away from having to store passwords either on like text files or inside of uh, definitely inside of like the comment field in Active Directory, right? Or even to the point of, and trust me, like password managers are good, but definitely use them. But also there's the opportunity of having Active Directory to manage these, which is better than using a password manager. So to kind of jump into this, I suspect Jason's going to like jump in at some point and talk to me about it. But Let's, let's go take a look here. So what we've got running here is a VM, and this VM has uh, the lab that I've got loaded here. So the lab is just Defending the Enterprise on GitHub uh, slash L1375. So if you just go to Defending the Enterprise on GitHub, you will see there's one repository of access to 1375, which is this GMSA. So all of the commands you need to set this up are right here in quick copy paste format. Now, uh, the commands are based off the domain that we've already got set up for our class. So obviously you won't be able to copy them directly. You'll have to like change the domain name and things like that to make this work in your own environment. But the, the premise still stands about how this works. So to jump down here, we've got a couple components uh, that we need to set up. But before we do that, the first thing we always tell all of our students to do every single time they run a command in our lab is two very important commands, right? And it's just host name and who am I? I'm actually gonna put Jason on the spot. Jason, why do we do that? Do you know? Uh, to make sure you're in the right VM. Yeah, so we've- What? <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, you, you got that one. Oh, oh. I, I've been right here for right? like seven years. I've been <laughs> listening and figuring out what you guys so are talking here's, about. So here's what can happen uh, and has happened in class before. We've had a student that was using VMware because that's where we're running our VMs from. Uh, and they had uh, their hypervisor connected in. And essentially what they did is they were on the wrong screen and they started running some of the commands from our lab in their production environment. Uh, that's bad. Uh, a lot of our labs from, from our class uh, are either destructive or they create a domain environment that is not repairable. So, and we do that in such a way that we, we get to talk about why it's non-repairable and why you shouldn't do it in production. So this is a quick way to like, hey, um, I'm logged into PowerShell here. I uh, better make sure that I am who I think I am on this context. That's the first thing we do. All right. So if you look at our labs here, just straight on all the way through, we've got a table of contents up here, but step one, again, who am I in host name? Make sure it matches, right? That's, that's the key piece there. All right. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna create a couple organizational units. So if you're familiar with Active Directory, you essentially put objects inside of, of organizational units in the domain, and then all those objects get attributes. So I'm gonna do the first one here. I'm just gonna create a new organizational unit called security groups. So real simple, I'm going to copy and paste this. And I'm gonna do it a couple times. I'm gonna like control C like 10 times like Jordan does because Sometimes it doesn't always work. All right. So this first one, we're going through, and now I've got a new uh, OU called Security Groups. Now you can't see it. It didn't come back saying anything. But if I were to go into like users and computers, all right, we'll see in here there's a new organizational unit called Security Groups right there. Nothing in it. We just created it. All right. Let's jump to that second one here. We're going to create another one called GMSA Groups. Now, to give you a context of how GMSAs work, uh, you're going to create a service account that is going to run some process, right? So in the case of the printers, that might have been for SMB file share, or in the case of um, what we're going to do in this lab is we're going to create some sort of financial reporting process, right? And we want the financial reporting process to be automated with a password that we'd never have to deal with. So we've created two OUs, security groups, and then another one called GMSA groups. And then next, we're going to create a new group called now, uh, it's called sec underscore GMSA underscore SOX reporting service. Now, uh, in our class, we talk a lot about those Active Directory best practices. We go into detail about naming conventions. So if you're looking at that thinking, 
Um, why it was a, a, such an interesting name for that, we talk about that in class. Now, uh, what we say about groups and, and, and really naming conventions entirely is you should be able to answer uh, the context of what the service account is doing, what the group is doing, uh, who's involved with that, who owns it, right, just by the name. So in this case, we can tell it's the context is about security, the context is about GMSA or group managed service accounts, and then we're specifying the specific service account that uh, we're, we're putting into the context here. So this is just a new group. Real simple, we've got back some information. Now, this came back because we've got pass through verbose on there, right? So we're grabbing that through. All right, next one on here. We're gonna create a new computer object. So obviously we're on one VM, so which is domain controller in this case. But if you think about it, we don't probably want the domain controller to run these, these financial reports, that'd be bad. So instead we're going to create a new computer that's going to run them for us. And that new computer has a name of server socks reporter, right? So it's a, it's a computer that's going to essentially run the reporting, uh, financial reporting for the, the GMSA account. Sorry, using the GMSA account for that service. So next up, we have a couple things to do here. We're going to go in and we're going to add a member into that group. And we're going to add in the new computer that we just created. So now this group here has a server in it called Server Socks Reporter. Now, because we only have one, uh, one system in this lab, uh, we're going to add in the one system, which is the domain controller. The reason we're going to do that is because we're we're going to demonstrate this process working. And uh, if we were to um, use just the server socks reporter, we wouldn't get to see anything because that computer doesn't actually exist. There's no physical device for it. All right, let's keep going. The next one here is kind of interesting. So we have to create a uh, KDS root key that's essentially going to be used to uh, encrypt and decrypt the password on the fly. Uh, but there's a key piece to this. Uh, Microsoft will not let you create GMSA accounts if the key does not exist for 10 hours prior to today or prior to right now. Uh, the reason for that is 10 hours in theory is the maximum amount of time where the key could replicate from one dom domain controller to all the other domain controllers in the forest that need to have that key. Right, so we're gonna really just do a hack and say, we're going to set the effective time to 10 hours ago. That way we'll, we're able to use the key right away. Solid, well yeah. done. Yeah. All right, so when we do this, we're gonna get a GUID back. This is not the actual key that's used to encrypt or decrypt. It's just the GUID of the actual uh, item, of the actual root key. All right, so let's go down and take a look at this GMSA now. So we're gonna create another OU called GMSAs. Now, Jason, what's gonna be inside of the OU? I, I, you have no idea what we're talking about. What's, what's gonna be inside uh, of the OU called GMSAs? A member? Yes, <laughs> what kind What kind of member? The one well, that you created? Uh, yeah, I did create it, yes, the GMSA is going to be inside the OU called GMSAs, absolutely. The member, yeah, I like it. <laughs> He's not wrong, all right. No, not wrong. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use this PowerShell uh, component here for uh, new AD service account. Right, so we're gonna create a new service account now. The service account is gonna be called GMSA Socks Rep. Now, uh, in terms of naming conventions, I could have expanded it out and said GMSA underscore Socks Reporting Service or whatever, but uh, we shorthand sometimes, uh, you could use that comment field, not for the password, uh, but to expand on what the service account actually is. All right, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. hit enter there. But uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bug you. I, I want you to clarify something for me. Yeah. At, at this point, we're we're trying to clean up our domain, right? We're we're tired of people installing services on, let's say, database boxes with uh, too much privilege. So, what are we actually addressing here? There, there's an attack that really this is solving. Yeah. So the big attack, well, aside from someone storing the password insecurely, like on a comment field and, and attribute for the uh, the actual service, uh, more specifically, like curb roasting, this kind of sidesteps that because if you think about curb roasting, you still have access to the password on the back end for the SPN. Uh, and this kind of sidesteps that because that attack might still exist, but the password is going to be managed by Active Directory. And when Active Directory manages it, it's not going to be like a six character password. It's going to max out the character length for the password. And then it's going to automate it and roll it every 30 days. Now, uh, both of those scenarios are configurable inside of group policy. So if you say, I don't want it to be, you know, this 128 character password or whatever it is, um, you can change that. Just like you can make it change the, the password uh, age to be 15 days or whatever if you so choose to. Uh, but the point is you're able to do this. Now, what's really cool about GMSAs too is after you've configured them, uh, say for example, uh, our server that we set up, the server socks reporter, say by chance it goes uh, disconnected from the network. But what's really interesting about that is because we do have a maximum password age in there and we've already got the Kerberos ticket uh, in memory and everything, sorry, uh, already have the Kerberos ticket on that service, uh, even if that system disconnects from the domain controller, you'll still be able to run that service uh, that service with that service account. 
So it's kind of interesting like that. But yeah, Kerber Roasting still exists, but in reality, the password that you're going to have is, is well, un, un, uncrackable in air quotes because ha. We'll, we'll, get there, <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll get there someday, NVIDIA. Okay. Uh, there's. Did you hear about that? NVIDIA lost her source code. Ooh. That was, uh, yeah, they lost their source code. And the other one was the uh, uncrackable thing for their uh, GPUs and being able to mine Ethernet, yeah, Ethernet, or Ethcoin rather, uh, Ethereum. Uh, they essentially said it's uncrackable, their protection to, to slow down the GPUs. And then and then someone just cracked it because, eh, as one does. All right, where did I leave off? I can't remember. All right, here we go. Uh, we create the new service account. Now, here's what's interesting about this and really important. Principal allowed to retrieve the managed password. Okay, so that's the password that uh, Active Directory is managing. Note that we put in there that group. So it's that SEC GMSA SOX reporting service, which is that group that we created up above uh, that had two members, the, the domain controller and the SOX reporting server that we created. Okay, we created the uh, path of where we want this thing to land at, which is inside the GMSA's OU. And then finally, we're going to give it a DNS, a, a DNS host name. All right, so next up, we're going to leave off. Can't remember. Yeah, let's keep going. Well, hold on. I think it's really nice that you make this copy and pasteable, and then you explain what the copy and pasteable things are. Uh, I also wanted to say hacks a lot. Uh, thanks for following Henry the Fifth. I think thanks for following and Papa Bear ten twenty seven. Thanks for following. Uh, we appreciate you following the channel. We're gonna keep doing this every single week, and so get back to what you're doing, Ken. Yeah, so um, for Jason, this says MKDIR. It actually stands for Make Directory, and we're creating a new... Do you want me? <laughs> we'll do that. All right, the next one is CD. That's going to be changing the directory. We're going to change our path directly into there, right? All right. Now, uh, Jason, do you know what Echo does? It uh, does what it did last time. <laughs> yes, exactly <laughs> correct, yeah. Um, well said. <laughs> I can't believe this. All right. So it absolutely does do just that. We're echoing and then we're piping out to outfile and dropping it into log.txt. So yeah, uh, essentially, yeah. 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 Make it simple. Yeah, we're creating we a batch file. Nothing into an empty <laughs> file called log to create the file. All right. So we're doing more than that, though. Um, we're now creating a uh, another line in that batch file right here, this gmsa.bat. We're saying, who am I? And pipe that into uh, our log.txt file, right? And then I'm doing the same thing, but this time it's going to say echo time and dumping into that log file. And then we're putting those both out file and putting it into the batch file. Uh, yeah, I know. I got to love it to be as confusing as possible. I literally could have opened up Notepad and copy and pasted it. But hey, you know, as one does. All right. I know we're already in the directory, right? But here's the thing. You can jump into any one of these different components and start working right from where you left off. All right. Let's, run, uh, let's go ahead and run this new batch file. I don't always copy paste. Okay. So have you made something that's simple complicated or have you made something complicated simple? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, true. I, I, I have taken uh, service account management and uh, given the steps to make it uh, easy, uh, but the process of server management in general is not necessarily easy. So, all right. So here's what I've done. I've created a batch file, right? And that batch file, all it does is it takes uh, who, I, who am I, right? We already know what that is. We just do who am I. And then it's also doing time, right? So those two, those, those two things, and it's dumping it into that, that uh, log.txt. So I can look at cat uh, log.txt, and there you go. I can also run the file. Uh, and then if I cat the log again, you'll see there's another record, right? So if I do that again, that's all I've done. Here's, I've just, I've created a service. This is uh, the SOX reporting service. It is a batch file that does two things. Um, it, it's all it does. All right. But I want you to notice who's running this, by the way. It's, it's me. It's my account that I'm logged in with right now. All right. Get on with it, as I would say. So let's go talk about the next thing here. We're going to have this service account do some, some things. But for it to be able to do some things, we don't want it to be a domain admin, right? Because we want to get away from service accounts from being highly privileged. So instead, we're going to change the access or the access control list uh, for where the service account is going to live and what it's going to do uh, to specifically it. So we're going to create a new ACL. And actually, excuse me, we're creating a variable called ACL and we're grabbing the existing ACL uh, from that. So if I were to do like this, you could actually see the ACL, right? Okay. Next step, we're going to create a new rule for the ACL. 
And essentially what we're doing is we're creating a new object. So we're going to create a new object, which is a file system access rule. And the access rule is going to be uh, DTE class, which is our domain, uh, GMSA SOX wrap, which is the service account, the GMSA service account that's going to run the service. We're going to give it full control okay, of the next place. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to combine our ACL with the new rule. And then we're going to apply our ACL to these three locations. Now, uh, in theory, you, you'd wanna be more restrictive than this as well. Uh, specifically, you wouldn't want the service account to have full control of the actual service it's running because you can see right here, I've given it full control of this batch file. But regardless, you don't wanna break that down and make it so it has read and execute, but not full. Regardless, we've got this set up here. So now if we're to go check that file, uh, the permissions on that, we'll actually see that uh, the service account has access to those. All right, the next stop, next step here is to reboot. And the reason we're rebooting is we've got that KDS key in there. Uh, we don't necessarily have to reboot. If you're in a multi-domain uh, domain controller environment, uh, you, you really are not going to have to, to reboot. Uh, but if you're operating from like a different uh, a system that says a different domain controller closer, this really just makes this process go a little bit faster in terms of us being able to start using this uh, new GMSA account right away. So, so th here's this, a is where we, this is where we had to fill time? Yes, we filled okay. time. Okay. Uh, so Salefin, thanks for following, and uh, thank you all for chatting. Uh, the goal is for us to be able to, let's see, uh, I'm gonna come up here full screen. The goal for us is to become Twitch affiliate and Twitch partners so that we get more features. So the fact that you follow it and the fact that you're chatting, chatting's good. If you chat, it helps us hack the Twitch algorithm so that way we get features faster. Okay, I'm done. Is it done yet? No, it's not done, it's almost done. Ah, all right, gotta, Jordan, how's, how's your garden doing? Garden's good. Things are coming to life, mm -hmm. springing mm -hmm. forth from both the ground and uh, the seed trays. So yeah. everybody yeah. is happy and healthy. Cool. If you didn't know, uh, Jordan is a an extensive gardener. In fact, like I have a goal in one day of just visiting Jordan's garden, like while it's full bloom, and just seeing it for myself. So, August. Uh, best I time. was yeah. August. I was there yesterday. September. If the con is ever out here in September. Come down. We'll uh, we'll have a cup of tea and wander around the yard and talk about the hundreds of varieties of things we grow here. Yes, I would love that. I would love that. All right, looks like it worked. Something, that, worked. Well, <laughs> something right rebooted. That's reboot. good. Oh, oh, thank goodness. Listen, if your domain controller doesn't reboot, you got bigger problems than this lab will help you with. <laughs> that is true. We've been in that situation too many times. <laughs> All right. Someone should tell me that I need to update Firefox, apparently. All right, so we're back here, back in the lab. Where did we leave off? We left off at a reboot, I think. Here we go, reboot, here we go. All right, next thing's next, right? We've already created this service or this batch file we're gonna use for this service. Now we're actually going to create a scheduled task. Now, uh, the scheduled task we're creating is going to be to run the batch file using the context of the service account, the group managed service account. But if you think about it differently, you could use an actual Windows service. You could configure them the same way. Uh, you can configure essentially anything that's going to use credentials the same as an SPN would. Uh, we're going to configure that. But in this case, we're doing it with uh, Task Manager without using Task Manager. All right. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new action. Let me try to shrink this down a little bit. There we go. So our new action is to create a new scheduled task. And it's going to be creating uh, the task is going to be a GMSA log. Right. That's that batch file we created. All right. Next thing we're going to do as part of this scheduled task is we're going to create a trigger. Uh, the trigger is going to be run once at whatever the current date is. So it's going to be uh, as soon as this triggers. Uh, we're going to re set the rep sorry, repetition interval of essentially every minute. So this is just going to run every minute. Now, you might not want to do this. Uh, your your Simon's actually reporting will probably take more than a minute. But this is just, just to show us how this works, right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the principle. Uh, by the way, these are, setting, these are setting variables that we're going to call later on. So an action variable called action, variable called trigger, and a variable called principle. So now, does the yeah. action do something and the trigger triggers something and the principle maintains something? Yeah. Have you ever created a scheduled task, just uh, like Jason, like for anything? A scheduled task. That just sounds like yeah. work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So oh, yeah, sure. you have. So in a scheduled task, as you know, uh, you have to essentially create a trigger, which is when something will occur. You have to create okay. an action, which is what's going to happen, and then you have to okay. set. Um, who will do the work, right? So uh, these are the three questions we've answered now. We're going to say, what is happening? <laughs> so somebody is so triggered, Deb. Um, all right. So uh, we're going to say what the action is. We're going to run that batch file. The trigger is every minute starting right now. And then the principle is the, the what. Who is going to do the work? 
Now in this gotcha. case, the work is going to be done by DTE class GMSA SOX Rep, right? So the SOX Reporter Service account is going to be what's going to do the work. Now, if you look at it, what's interesting about this is logon type is password, but we haven't set a password for that group managed service account and we never will have to. But in terms of how this is going to authenticate, it will be using the password. Okay, right. I got a quick question for Noel Moniker before you keep going. Is it common yeah. to set these things up via PowerShell in an enterprise environment or do companies go, whoa, 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 use the product we bought to set this up? Uh, this is where I have a couple minute rant about uh, Windows 2012 R2. And after that, Microsoft said, okay, everybody, uh, domain controllers, they're going to be Windows Core and there will be no GUI for you to operate in anymore. Uh, so so uh, bear that in mind. Uh, one of the things we do in class is we try to uh, administer as much as possible from PowerShell. Now, this is, and I'll show this, this is exactly the same way you would do it in scheduled tasks. And I'll show that in just a moment. Um, the process is not much different, but as we see with system administrators and then kind of adding on uh, the, uh, adding on some security context to it, you end up in, in PowerShell and you know, bash uh, consoles far, far more often than GUI because you can be much more effective and efficient at it from there than you can be uh, from the scenario of doing it in GUI. Also, uh, if you're click ha happy like I am, I'm at least super click happy sometimes, uh, there's less opportunity for me to like hit the wrong button, I suppose. Now, I could definitely do typos because I'm great at typos. All right, back to it. The last component of this is we're going to register a new scheduled task. So this scheduled task is going to have an action of our variable up here. It's going to have a trigger of our trigger right here. And we're going to have a name called Test Socks Reporter GMSA. Uh, you, you could find a better name. As the naming conventions go, uh, maybe it shouldn't say test in it unless this is a test environment. All right. Description is probably not accurate either, but it is going to run every minute. Lastly is the principal who's going to do the work. The principal that will be doing the work is going to be our principal variable or the GMSA Socks Reporter account, right? So from this perspective, we can now go into scheduled tasks. And someone mentioned you know, the, the GUI component of this as opposed to doing it in PowerShell. Like I said, we try to do as much of our class through PowerShell as possible to demonstrate, because most people already know how to create scheduled tasks uh, using the scheduled task GUI, right? Uh, but from that perspective, not fewer people know and are comfortable doing it in PowerShell, and it's kind of what we wanted to drive. Throughout class, as we teach concepts of Active Directory and security, we're also teaching additional things that you might not think about, like administering through PowerShell. All right. So in here, if we go to this You mean here. there was a GUI the whole time? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a GUI the whole time. All right, here's our scheduled task we created. Um, if you'll see the next runtime, oh, it's already ran. That's okay though. So if we go in here, we'll see our scheduled task and see it runs every minute. You'll see down here, security options. Uh, when running this task, use the following user account. It's already selected for us. It's already in there. Uh, and it's all grayed out, so we can't change it. Our trigger here is gonna be every minute. And then our actions is to run that GMSA log. Okay, so if you recall, uh, inside of Jordan, this is where Jordan tells me to uh, follow the lab. Trust the process, guys. Trust the process. I know I'm not trusting the process, am I? All right, here we go. So this is that log file, remember? And that log file it was a result of the batch file getting updating it every time. So what you see here is that the GMSA account is now the process that runs who am I and puts it into this log file as well as the timestamp that's running there. So that so, ran in 58.13 seconds. What's up with that? <laughs> Where did you see that at? Which one? The timestamps. Oh, the timestamps. Uh, yeah, well, let's see. Uh, yeah, it did. My, uh, do you want me to guess on that? I, I mean, do, Windows, I'm curious. Windows isn't perfect, we can keep going here. <laughs> Man, that one was pretty close. Yeah, I mean, let's see. This is hours, minutes, seconds. You're you're talking in the milliseconds. We're talking about that right? one was so, fifty nine point three nine. So not bad, not bad. Yeah, I mean, this is a VM running on a laptop with another VM running and also <laughs> streaming. So, is there an epoch in PowerShell too, or is that just Unix? Oh, there should be someone to blame the hypervisor. Yes, ah, I kind of like workstation though. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well. This works now, right? That's what we wanted to demonstrate is this already works. Um, I can run this, you know, just keep catting it. You'll see if these continue to get to go up. Um, what's interesting about this, though, is that this process of using uh, what the Kerberos thing attack that Jordan mentioned earlier, getting that password, sorry, the password hash and trying to crack a password. If you were to do this now, that'll still work to some degree, but you're going to get a hash that's you uncrackable, right? You, you really can't. That password is so long that 
at default is so long as you're not going to be able to crack it meaningfully right now. Uh, but from that perspective, uh, the whole goal was to get rid of some service account that you had to store the password for somewhere, right? Uh, and really, the other thing about that is you're, you've offloaded this from being where you had to type in the password manually and have it saved uh, to having actually to manage the password, as well as being able to control who has access to the password. And it's all behind the scenes using SPNs. So that's kind of how this works. Now, there's a couple of things I wanted to point out with this as well. Uh, we've already got Sysmon loaded. So I thought it'd be fun to take a quick look at, at what Sysmon is telling us about this. And it's not as much as I kind of thought, which really it does, it does make sense because the entire Kerberosing uh, sorry, the entire SPN authentication process is already well documented and, and there really does not need to be more logs about how to do that. But I did want you to point out something here for Sysmon. If we drop down into Windows, we go way, 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 way down here. Way, way down here. Scroll do all forever. computers have uh, event viewer on it or all Mac or PCs? Uh, you could remove it. It's it's an MMC, it's, it's a management console snap-in. So, in theory, you could remove the components necessary for Feels it. Feels like it takes up a lot of space. I'd just get rid of it. <laughs> you know, if you if you if you want to say something never happened, you just get rid of the logs, and that's fine. Got it. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so if we look at this here, uh, we've got Sysmon already loaded using Sysmon modular, uh, and we've got a couple of things going on. This one kind of already we already know what's going on here. We're running Who Am I? Uh, which is kind of cool. We, we see these things. Event ID one is, is process create. So we're seeing uh, these processes as they're being triggered for whatever reason, uh, we're seeing them automatically end up uh, in Sysmon. So this one's just cmd.exe, which we're using inside batch or inside, uh, we're using cmd.exe to run the batch files. So we'll see that in there as well. You can see right here, uh, cmd.exe is of course, the command line's right there. So we're running cmd.exe inside the task, uh, the scheduled task to run the batch file right here. And I should be able to, let's just refresh this here. There we go. So here you'll see, yep, DMSA log. And then here you'll see the, who am I? Where'd it go? I lost it. Right at the top. Right at the top, it's right there. So what's interesting about the who am I one is, yeah, you see that who am I is running, but if you scroll down, you can actually see what triggered that to run, the parent command line of what allowed that to run. So uh, one more thing I wanted to show really quick. If you go way, way back up here, for like forever back up here, we'll go to the uh, Windows logs, go to security. So we've got this running in the background now, and there's a couple logs that I wanted to, to kind of show and, and take a look at what's actually happening here. Uh, and that's, I've got them already in the lab, so you can see just another bonus to kind of investigate these logs, but these should be in order for what's happening here. And it's got a, this is why no one uses the uh, event viewer. They use a sim instead because you got to like, do all these things to make it work. This is a mess. Hold on. Let's just let's just do that. There we go. Now I can't see my my. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. Kent is a professional. Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Clearly. This is why. This is why we're in PowerShell. <laughs> because because of this right here. All right. Here we go. What do we want first? We want forty six twenty four. That's going to be what right here. Cool. Check this out. So. I've got a couple things going on here. This is, uh, the account name is DTE DC1, uh, and we've got a SID up here of null, okay? So if you go in here and take a look, what's actually happening here is you've got the system is checking out the account name DC1. But if we keep going, we'll see now DC1 is getting a special privileges attached to its session. And then we keep going up here. Oh, it updated on me, hold on, 4624, eh, special log on, right here, right here, this one, maybe. I'm gonna find it. Maybe I won't. Let me refresh. This is probably the most entertaining part of the live stream so far. Pandemonium. Just Pandemonium. You. Yeah, is it? I don't know. This is where I'd write a PowerShell script to pull like the last few seconds, so I wouldn't have to like actually look inside of Windows Event Viewer. I, I almost wish I had like a. Do, 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 do. It, like, it kind of do do uh, does like a blue team ever actually work in inside the Windows Event Viewer? Or do they just pull logs and pull customized them versions them? only? There's <laughs> yeah. no way. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. No, no, no. Oh, all right. We're going to leave off. Leave 4768. That's what we want right here. All right. So the next process, uh, Kerberos authentication ticket. It's requested. So we're now using this account name, uh, and it's being spawned off. Let's see if we can find it here. Um, against the Kerberos ticketing service, right? So essentially what's happening is uh, the system is now requesting this guy right here, uh, authentication token for him. The next one is going to be the service, the actual service it's going to run. So you'll see now here's the account name 
and it is running on this service ID. So we now have this system is getting a service ticket for that service account. And keep going. We'll now see, see account name here. Now see we have a login using credentials of the service account. So what's interesting about this is it it's like telling you what's going on. Logon was attempt using explicit credentials, right? It has it now has the credentials via the SPN. So it's now actually logging in with this with those credentials. And if we keep going here, we'll now see impersonations. We now have this account that's using impersonation and so on and so forth. And if we if we compare this uh, back to uh, the system on event IDs for event ID one for the Pasha's creation. Uh, as soon as we hit this one where it's impersonating, it's now going to run that service, uh, the actual service, the SOC reporting service. <sighs> hey, that's the lab. Tell me a joke, Jason. All right, let's see. Well, there was a man. Um, I, that's it. That's all I got. So there was a man who talked about Active Directory. Oh yeah, he used PowerShell. He did use PowerShell as much and, as possible. Yeah. Uh, uh, now that I see that there is a GUI, I get it. I get it. I get the power. Yeah, function. yeah. But wouldn't you just rather be in the command line here? Because like yeah. this GMSA accounts up here, and look, it's yeah. got these members. Remember when we added members to a group? That's right here. Sure. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, so over zealous hazard, thanks for following. Pete Moss, thanks for following. For everyone joining us here today, if you have any questions, like. The next couple of minutes is your time. If you want to throw any questions into the chat, feel free to do so. And then Kent, uh, Jordan, I think you have to leave, maybe. Uh, I got a couple time. more minutes. Yep. Okay. Anybody got anything? Anyone? 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 Active Directory, E Directory, mm -hmm. and Open LDAP walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I got. I got nothing. <sighs> uh, and then uh, Microsoft came in and stole their ideas and walked away and had a son called Active Directory. Oh, you and then built the best security platform that the world <laughs> has ever known. <laughs> it is, it is. Who knew that the heuristics that Microsoft was gaining and, and leveraging for the last like, what, 15, 10 years with Windows 10 was just that they could create a security platform that was highly effective. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, so if you like today, we're gonna keep showing up. We're gonna keep doing free training, free labs, free hands on stuff. We're gonna keep doing this. Uh, so if you like it, and you want more of it, please let us know what you want to see. In fact, you letting us know what you want to see will be the things that we show you. Uh, so if there's anything you want to drop into the chat, we will go ahead and see if we can find someone to teach that to you. If not, we'll figure it out, and then we'll teach it to you. Uh, that's one of the things that we do. Right, Jordan, Kent? Like, you figure things out so that you can teach it? Absolutely. We yeah. see problems consistently, and then we build solutions for them, and then try to share that as knowledge for people who pay us to learn how to solve these mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. And White Cyberduck said, hey guys, uh, hey White Cyberduck. And then Noel Monikers, how much tweaking would you would be necessary to these commands for managing cloud systems with these? Ooh, if you're interesting. managing like your Active Directory and user infrastructure in the cloud, none, right? Your, your AD infrastructure is communicable wherever it is, right? Regardless of, you know, on-prem or cloud, if you're using clouds for directory, the commands are the same. They don't change. You're still interacting with your domain through PowerShell. It does not matter where it resides. So Pyro Angles, is it Angels or Angles? I can't read backwards. Uh, asked about gaffing tape. And I will say, just getting back from San Diego, yep, we all you got know about gaffer tape? Yeah, we so all you got met, pulled yet again. Yeah, you met Slegna while you were there. So that is, uh, that is definitely. I'm pretty sure it's Pyro Angels. Pyro, is that backwards? <laughs> chat button. Can you teach me how to use this? Pyro Angels is like the. Oh man! Wow. I've been saying it. Wow. Did, are, are we how all come, learning this? How come you don't call me Roxy? Just curious. I, I don't know. I, I knew this years ago. Wow. Uh, so hey, I learned hey, something. Hey, all right, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Deb. Thanks for your uh, side comments. All right, everybody. If you enjoyed today's anti-siphon live stream, please, please share it with other people. We're also on YouTube, I guess. Uh, so hit and smash. Like essentially, what I told John yesterday is like anyone that made it to the end of this video has already hit smash. You know, subscribe. Uh, we don't have to tell you. It's the people who get like ten seconds in, like, what is this? Active Directory? I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's not what I signed up for at all. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Jordan and Kent, thank you so much. Uh, we'll get you a scheduled class at some point. 
And we'd love to have you back for a Black Hills webcast. All right, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers. Going to hit end stream.